Multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease in the central nervous system with a prevalence of 1 per 1,000 people with the most common age group affected between the ages of 20 to 30. Multiple sclerosis is also seen in areas away from the equator which will be justified later on. Moreover, females are two times more prone to being affected than males. Before talking pathology, let us discuss the anatomy of a part of the central nervous system, which consists of the brain and the spinal cord. Both of these contain neurons, which are used to relay messages from one point to another. These neurons in the central nervous system are ensheathed by myelin. Myelin allows the propagation of electrical impulses at a high speed reaching 120 meters per second. This myelin is made up of specialized plasma membrane of oligodendrocytes made up by, by lipids and proteins. These oligodendrocytes extend processes towards the axons and wraps them, creating a segment called internode, which is occupied by the myelin. Even though myelin is found all over the central nervous system, it is most prominent in the white matter. Now the axons of the peripheral nervous system also contains myelin, but they are made by Schwann cells instead of oligodendrocytes. So what happens if there's an issue in the aforementioned information? It is what we call demyelinating disorders, in which there is damage to the myelin or oligodendrocytes with the axons spirit. Demyelinating disorders include progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy and injury caused by drugs and toxins as well as multiple sclerosis which is the most common demyelinating disorder and our concern in this video. However, what is multiple sclerosis? As previously mentioned, it is an autoimmune disease. Normally in the brain, there is what we call a blood-brain barrier. This is a tight barrier that only allows specific molecules to enter the brain. Some T cells have a cell receptor that allows it to enter this barrier. Once it enters, it recognizes myelin antigens and binds to it. This is what we call type 4 hypersensitivity reaction or cell mediated delayed hypersensitivity reaction. This binding facilitates the release of cytokines as interleukin-1, interleukin-6, tissue necrosis factor, and interferon gamma. These cytokines cause the dilation of the blood-brain barrier and the accumulation of inflammatory cells. B cells will make antibodies against the myelin and, and oligodendrocytes, which cause the recruitment of macrophages to engulf them, resulting in their damage. At early phase, this damage is reversible, however long-standing autoimmunity does not only cause the permanent damage of oligodendrocytes, it also causes damage of axons that stop neuronal communication and eventually neuronal death. Multiple sclerosis is associated with genetic and environmental factors. Genetic factors include as previously mentioned being a female, with a concordance rate of 25% between monozygotic twins and a 15 times chance between relatives. It is also related to HLA DR2, which is a marker your body uses to identify itself. As for the environmental factors, these include infections and vitamin D deficiency, which explains why it's seen in areas away from the equator, meaning that there is less sunlight, hence less vitamin D. Morphologically, Multiple sclerosis occurs in the white matter, commonly around ventricles. Affected areas show multiple, well-circumscribed, slightly depressed, glassy, grey-tan, irregular lesions called plaques, which form due to axonal damage. These plaques are divided to three types. The first one are called active plaques, in which there is evident myelin breakdown with inflammatory cells as lymphocytes and monocytes. The second type is inactive plaques, in which there is no inflammation with no myelin and you can notice gliosis and astrocytic proliferation. The third type, called shadow plaques, in which the border between normal areas and affected areas of the white matter are not sharply demarcated, with thin myelin indicating incomplete demyelination or partial remyelination. 
As for the cl clinical features and complications that the patient presents with, they are episode episodes of relapses followed by recovery which progresses with time. The complications are vast and many since these plaques can be found anywhere in the central nervous system. Therefore, the symptoms depend on the location. The first symptom is due to plaques in the optic nerve which lead to unilateral visual impairment, which is blurred vision in one eye, also called nystagmus. Plaques in the brainstem lead to vertigo and ataxia, which is uncoordinated eye movement and slurred speech as if the patient is drunk. The third symptom occurs due to plaques in the spinal cord, which give motor and sensory impairment of trunk and limbs with lower extremity weakness. For an example, Sensory neurons to the skin lead to a feeling in numbness, pins and needles, and paresthesia. Another example is Lermit's sign, which is a feeling of electric shock radiating the back when the patient bends their neck forward. Moreover, plaques in the autonomic nervous system leads to loss of bladder control as well as sexual dysfunction. Last but not least, plaques in the medial longitudinal fasciculus leads to internocular ophthalmoplegia, in which normally the left eye and the right eye are controlled by lateral rectus and medial rectus muscles. The lateral rectus muscle, muscles are innervated by cranial nerve 6, while the medial rectus is innervated by cranial nerve 3. Cranial nerve 6 will relay with the opposite cranial nerve 3. At this, at this point, there is the, the medial longitudinal fasciculus. When you try to move your eye to the right, this will fire lateral rectus of the right eye and medial rectus of the left eye. A plaque in the medial longitudinal fasciculus leads to movement of the right eye without movement of the left eye. As for the diagnosis of these patients, there are two ways. The first one is a lumbar puncture in which a needle is inserted between your lumbar vertebra to extract cerebrospinal fluid. A patient with multiple scler sclerosis will show increased lymphocytes and oligoclonal IgG and myelin basic protein. The second way is MRI of the brain, which shows plaques, however these plaques come and go in patients, so they are not always detectable. Treatment of multiple sclerosis target targets relieving the symptoms and slowing the progression with no cure. These include, first of all, corticosteroids like oral, oral prednisone or IV methylprednisolone, which works by decreasing the inflammation of neurons by entering the cell and binding to a nuclear receptor causing the inhibition of cyclooxygenase, which, is, which induces inflammation. However, the side effects of these drugs include osteoporosis, which is fragile bones, hypertension, weight gain, and bruising. Another treatment is plasmapheresis, in which the blood of the patient is separated from the plasma in order to remove the, ant uh, the antibodies and inflammatory cells, but it is a time-consuming process. The third treatment is using interferon beta. It is sold under the brand name beta Seron and Extavia. The interferon beta slow the progression of this disease by decreasing cytokines and passage of the cells in the blood-brain barrier, hence decreasing inflammation. The side effects of these drugs are not serious and include headache and dizziness. This is all you need to know about multiple sclerosis, the meaning of demyelinating disorders, the pathology of this autoimmune disease, as well as its relations with genetics and environmental factors, its morphology, complications, diagnosis and treatment. Thank you for watching.